Since you took office, the price of essentials has increased. For example, a basket of groceries that cost $100 then now costs more than $120. And typical home prices have jumped more than 30%. What do you say to voters who feel they are worse off under your presidency than they were under President Trump? We got to take a look at what I was left when I became president and what Mr. Trump left me. We had an economy that was in free fall. The pandemic was so badly handled. Many people were dying. All he said was, it's not that serious. Just inject a little bleach into your arm. You'll be all right. The economy collapsed. There were no jobs. Unemployment rate rose to 15 percent. It was terrible. And so what we had to do is try to put things back together again. And that's exactly what we began to do. We created 15,000 new jobs. <clears throat> we brought out a, a, a position where we have 800,000 new manufacturing jobs. But there's more to be done. There's more to be done. Working class people are still in trouble. I come from Scranton, Pennsylvania. I come of household where the kitchen table, if the things weren't able to be met during the month, it was a, pr a problem. Price of eggs, the price of gas, the price of housing, the price of a whole range of things. That's why I'm working so hard to make sure I deal with those problems, that we're going to make sure that we reduce the price of housing. We're going to make sure we build two, two million new units. We're going to make sure we cap rents so corporate greed can't take over. The combination, what I was left with in corporate greed is the reason why we're in this problem right now. In addition to that, we're in a situation where if you had to take a look at all that was done in his administration, he didn't do much at all. By the time he left, there were things were in chaos, literally chaos. And so we put things back together. We created, I said, those jobs. We make sure we had a situation where we now we brought down the price of prescription drugs, which is a major issue for many people, to $15 for, for uh, an insulin shot as opposed to $400. No senior has to pay more than $200 for any drug, all the drugs they can include beginning next year. And the situation is making, we're going to make that available to everybody, to all Americans. So we're working to bring down the price of around the kitchen table, and that's what we're going to get done. Thank you. President Trump? We have the greatest economy in the history of our country. Uh, we have never done so well. Every, everybody was amazed by it. Other countries were copying us. We got hit with COVID. And when we did, we spent the money necessary so we wouldn't end up in a Great Depression, the likes of which we had in 1929, by the time we finished. So we did a great job. We got a lot of credit for the economy, a lot of credit for the military, and no wars, and so many other things. Everything was rocking good. But the thing we never got the credit for, and we should have, is getting us out of that COVID mess. Uh, he created mandates that was a disaster for our country. But other than that, we had we had given them back a a country where the stock market actually was higher than pre-COVID, and nobody thought that was even possible. Uh, the only jobs he created are for illegal immigrants and bounce-back jobs, a bounce-back from the COVID. He has not done a good job. He's done a poor job, and inflation's killing our country. It is absolutely killing us. Thank you. President Biden? Well, look, the greatest economy in the world, he, he's the only one who thinks that, I think. I don't know anybody else who thinks he's the, the greatest economy in the world. And, you know, the fact of the matter is that uh, we find ourselves in a situation where his, his economy, he rewarded the wealthy. He had the largest tax cut in American history, $2 trillion. He raised a deficit larger than any president has in any one term. He's the only president other than Herbert Hoover who's had lost more jobs than he had when he began, since Herbert Hoover. The idea that he did something that was significant in the military. You know, when he was president, they were still killing people in Afghanistan. He didn't do anything about that. When he was president, we were still finding ourselves in a position where you had a notion that we were this safe country. The truth is, I'm the only president this century that doesn't have any, this, this decade, that doesn't have any troops dying anywhere in the world like he did. It's not going to drive them higher. It's just going to cause countries that have been ripping us off for years, like China and many others, in all fairness to China. It's going to just force them to pay us a lot of money, reduce our deficit tremendously, and give us a lot of power for other things. But he, would, he made a statement. The only thing he was right about is I gave you the largest tax cut in history. I also gave you the largest regulation cut in history. That's why we had all the jobs. And the jobs went down, and then they bounced back. And he's taking credit for bounce-back jobs. You can't do that. He also said he inherited 9 percent inflation. No, he inherited almost no inflation, and it stayed that way for 14 months 
and then it blew up under his leadership because they spent money like a bunch of people that didn't know what they were doing, and they don't know what they were doing. It was the worst, probably the worst administration in history. There's never been. And as far as Afghanistan is concerned, I was getting out of Afghanistan, but we were getting out with dignity, with strength, with power. He got out. It was the most embarrassing day in the history of our country's life. Uh,